not see that. It's been an exciting year, frankly. What is it, uh, April? I'm not a stats guy. I don't keep track of (laughs) really much of anything. I don't have space in my brain for it. I don't feel that I need to do it, and therefore I don't. I won't apologize for it. Therefore, I mean, you can, I, I get an email like, is, is this, how, this doesn't work. It's not real. It's not free. Nothing's free. Okay, I ignore that. It doesn't really matter to me. New Yorkers like me, they're always, I want to pigeonhole them and say that they're always very specific about, how many sh- free laundries have you done in New York? Can I get the phone number of somebody who's doing it? And I field these emails all the time. I'm very particular about making sure that I answer your emails, danny at freelaundromat.com, because it's important. You're grappling for information, even if it's only in that moment, and you want to know, is the laundromat business right for me? Should I buy one? Should I build one from scratch? Should I ignore this whole mess? And if I'm truly here to help, I have to help you with all of it. When I get that email from a guy or gal anywhere in the world, and they say, yeah, give me the number of somebody who's doing it, somebody who's successful with you. They haven't done anything but watch a couple of YouTube videos, and that's neither here nor there. But this is a piker. This is somebody who says, I am a skeptic, so you prove me right, and you wrong. Or scratch that, reverse it. You know what to write back? Sir, when you open your laundromat there in Schenectady, New York, Do you want me giving your number out to people like you who are simple pikers peering in from the outside? I won't give your number out to those people. Send. Man, what a dick. Little gray hair. Empire of laundromats built. Yeah, HBO was, is talking to me about doing a lifestyle show then maybe you'll see what I do. I'm not a private person, obviously, and this call isn't about me. It's about you and helping you. But there are aspects of my life that are none of your business. Really. If you dug a little bit, you'd figure it out. Huge machine gun collector. Building Humvees right now to put on my property because they're perfect. You want to drive it in Scottsdale? Or Beverly Hills? I'd like you guys to jump in on the live top chat, ask some questions, because we'll get to those. As we do. But today, the exciting news, we're making a follow-up call where we have already had a fairly meaningful discussion with a landlord's agent in Ohio, Middle America. Danny, does this work in Ottumwa, Iowa? It does. It has. Will it work in Canada? It does. It has. 28 countries and counting. I think it's 29 now. Not just with me making the telephone calls like you're about to see live and hammering out a deal with landlords or ladies. Not just that, many of the folks, my students, my clients, my future prodigies, many of them simply get my silly course and then move forward. I call it silly because I'm not going to call it a thing. I'm not going to say that it's the most brilliant, most fantastic, most blah, blah, blah. Didn't have to say that for a long time. The most recent Horse shit that's flowing around the universe is that 95% of laundromats don't fail. Is that, that's a double negative? Laundromats have a 95% success rate. The Coin Laundry Association itself 
started that lie. So if you are so pinheaded, small-minded, and ignorant about the business, you might Google, tell me about laundromat facts. And one of those facts will be that laundromats have a 95% success rate. <laughs> the Coin Laundry Association included has no idea how many laundromats there are on planet Earth. They don't know. They don't know. Imagine that. I don't know. Knife Juggling Association of K Kennesaw, Georgia. They probably know how many flaming knife jugglers there are. To the one. Why is that a clever lie? Why are they able to get away with it? Because the laundromat that sits open and operating since 1950. Somewhere in Utah, on the street corner of Main and 4th Avenue, I'm making this up, but that laundromat has been there since 1950, and every guy that drove by or gal was able to stop, go in, do their laundry. Still open and operating today. But guys... Here's why that number, that figure, that fact has so many holes in the boat. Why there's a chink in that armor. Why it's fucking bullshit. Because that particular store and all of the others they're including in this figure have changed hands so many times. You can split hairs and even argue this fact, but that store has had 40 owners since 1950. That's 39 failures. Or 39 people that have purchased it from the previous entity who didn't want that laundromat any longer. Hmm. Who's more right in this? The one who's telling you a clever lie or proliferating it and I don't want you to get on your computer and go try to find out who these knuckleheads are who are selling courses. Good God. You only have to listen to five minutes of their diatribe. It's all, all right, let me tell you the secrets of laundromat ownership. The secrets? Go in my chat right now and ask me anything. None of this is a fucking secret. I'm just the old man in the sea, the one that's been doing... I've been consulting for 20 years, kids. In this industry, yes. Those that know me, those that are on here, those that have worked with me, we might call Hender in a little while. I hope Hender's on here. And Hender, I'm, I'm going to get back to you either way. You join forces with Danny D'Angelo. You allow me to become your sword and your shield. And I will work my ass off for you. My pledge. It's not writing anywhere. The best compliment you can give me when we get on a telephone consultation, you say, you know what, Danny? I like you because you're real. Well, it doesn't impress me. Because fake, we can smell it a mile away. Some jackhole that has a laundromat somewhere who's trying to tell you that they want to sell you some course? They know who they are. It's all of them. I'm going to put some X marks here. And guys, we're going to get to a live landlord call. It's pretty exciting. Please continue to jump into the top chat and ask queries, questions. Tell me your stories. Tell me about your laundromat, what you did, how you did it. If I helped you, let everybody else know. I'd appreciate that. I really would. Shout out of a cannon. Excited to get this done. Blackie Rosenthal. Who does that remind me of? I'm not sure what color Blackie is, but that sounds like one of the Rat Pack. Y'all know who he is. Well, shit, howdy. I thought you only made calls on Tuesdays. I do calls every single day of the week, bro. Sometimes I drag my ass onto the YouTube on a Saturday. Sometimes... What is today? Wednesday. I hopped on Reddit and spoke to others who hired you. Then I hired you myself. Well, 
I'm sorry for the others that you spoke with who hired me because they had to deal with you. I don't blame you for reaching out to them, but again, I don't send people to my previous prodigies. It's not my place. I don't need to prove shit. But I guess that's sort of an endorsement in a way, isn't it? So, thanks. JJ says, Dan the man. Yo, JJ. Noah says, some people want, quote, proof testimonials, but the facts that there aren't any people out there calling Danny a scammer says it all. Appreciate your time, Noah. Thank you, Noah. I'm getting to know you, Noah. I know your name now. Some of my regulars. That's true. Some of the stuff that I say is fairly specific to some knuckleheads, but now it's becoming more general. The distributors, the manufacturers, the fact that there are no videos online saying, use an ADA loan to go get a laundromat. I mean, what? clever financing to get your laundromat. Clever financing to get your laundromat? One of the things they're bandying about now is Use the home equity line of credit. What the fuck? I could use a home equity line of credit to buy crack cocaine. I could use it to buy anything, hookers and blow. I could use it to buy anything. It's my money. It's my equity. It's like having cash in your pocket. So if someone's telling you, use your HELOC to go out and buy a laundromat, to go out and purchase a failed business utilizing the equity in your home, no one's vetting that. If you go to Wells Fargo, Chase Manhattan, or your local Navy Federal Credit Union, you say, I want to buy a laundromat. Eh. Too many of them fail. They're not going to pull up giant lever that says 95% of laundromats Succeed forever? Guys, if 95% of laundromats never failed, how would I even exist? How would my hundreds of success stories be doing this? Okay, well, maybe you're new to the channel. Maybe you just jumped on here. You've seen this lunatic turn red in the face. Here's what we do, no secrets. Rather than, we have to talk about the failures, rather than giving someone hundreds of thousands of dollars for their already failed business who would sell a successful cash business, no one. They have excuses, not reasons. I'm retiring. I thought this was an absentee business, which it is not. They'll tell you it's absentee. I spent maybe an hour a month in there. <laughs> Rather than buy someone's failure, we have to talk about what not to do before we talk about what you must do. Go out and scout all the stores in your local town, constabulation, island that you live on of the Caribbean, go look at those laundromats. Try not to vomit your lunch up. Leave, call the landlord and say, that place is a dog hole. I want to take it over, spend some money on equipment. Yes, free laundromat is not really free. You will be spending money, but you'll be spending it on you and your future and your family's future success in the form of equipment, which we also talk about in the course, which you will purchase properly at the right price. No one knows what that equipment is worth, what it costs, or what they should be spending on it. Damn, look at these secrets. You might imagine I read an email before I jumped on this and it pissed me off a little bit. A laundromat is not a complicated business, so don't overcomplicate it. In my consulting universe, I talk to trying to be clever, teachers, farmers, candlestick makers, and the like. Engineers, they're the worst. Danny, I have a spreadsheet full of questions for you. Oh boy, you're the best. Type A, okay. Throw the questions out. Let me answer every one of them before you ask even one. Then I tell them about the laundry business, how they're going to get into it, what they're going to do, how they're going to finance the equipment. And then they, I can hear crumpling. Uh, you answered them all. What we do here is physically scout existing laundromats. Speak to the powers that be, the landlord or their rep. Sign a lease. That seems backward, right? 
You should go buy the business for hundreds of thousands of dollars, thinking you made a great deal, and then go to the landlord. Hat in hand. Excuse me, sire. I understand you are the lord of the land. May I have a lease, please? He's going to rubber stamp you, idiot, and charge you whatever the fuck he thinks is appropriate. So the only way to do this right, and I'm not talking about national chains or nail salons. I'm talking about coin laundries, which should remain coin, another question that you have. We do it this way. Or please, for the love of God, go do something else. Greg says, I like the idea of owning, operating a laundromat, but don't know where to start. Oh, well, shit, Greg, you're already doing it. I have capital, have a BBA in finance, etc., but never was an entrepreneur. At least you spelled it right. Greg, did you use spell check? Don't lie to me, I can tell. Where's the best place to start learning? Are, are you shitting me right now? Go get them, guys. <sighs> Jesus, Greg. Right here, Greg. But I will say this. Go learn everything you, else you can. Follow <clears throat> the idiots' YouTube videos. Idiots, plural. Buy their silly books. Grab yourself a marker and only mark the things that you learned that you knew nothing about. Entrepreneurship and laundromats. When you get to the end of the book, you've probably wasted the six or seven hours it takes to read it. I am not going to tell you not to fill your head with all the information that you can, my friend, but at what cost? Six hours of your time to read that book? Was it worth it? I want you guys to keep asking queries and jump on the questions in the top chat. We're going to make the live call now. And I've put some X's across the thing. I do that for my own sanity so I know where I left off. So we will jump back on and we will do that. Are you on here, Hender? All righty. Let's go all the way to Ohio. Little dialing music, Paul. Firing on all cylinders, except for this one. Hey, Danny. What up? Not much. That's good. You sound sleepy. <laughs> I'm nervous because I know I'm on YouTube. Oh, God. <laughs> Please. If you didn't know that the YouTube machine was running, then would you be nervous? Yeah, I'm not as nervous now. Yeah, there's all of 40. The worst people. part is the wife, the wife and kids are watching in the early room. That's the worst <laughs> part. Make fun of me. Uh, hello, <laughs> wife. How many kids? Three. Hello, Levi, wife. Levi, Braden, Brooklyn. And three kids. What? Oh, don't give their names out. People are fucking weird. Oh, now I cursed. <laughs> now I cursed in front of your kids. God damn it. All right. So, uh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, there's no reason to be nervous. Shit, I do all the work. And that's part of, part of it, isn't it? You know, people don't want to call landlords. They're scared. It, 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 and I'm not picking on you personally. Nobody knows who you are. We're not going to use last names. We're, we're just going to tell the address so they can all come over to your store. All right, give me the breakdown. <laughs> uh, I deal with so many stores and so many clients, and I'm also, I'm never going to pretend that I remember the deals. And that's why we use the Google document. That's why we're very careful with photographs and make sure that we document every call we make. We keep track of those calls. So for the cheap seats, and frankly me, uh, what's the history of, of the place going back to maybe even, did you have history with this laundromat before you knew me? Uh, I tried getting a hold of the, the realtor before I met you, and uh, he sucked at answering the phone. So that there was, was a lot of that. In September, yeah, in September, you started calling the original realtor and he never answered and evidently this new realtor is taking over and same uh brokerage or whatever um we just finally got a hold of her a couple weeks ago they are asking 14 dollars a square foot and triple nets of 225 
there's a place down the road that is ten dollars a square foot um, oh, so we're okay. going to ask for 10. Out, so that's why in quotes here, our ask should be. Is that their property that's 10 bucks per square down the road or is it uh, someone else? You're just using that as, as a gauge. Correct, yeah, it's somebody else's. Where did you see it? Uh, that was on C. The I don't need the specifics. I mean, is it listed? Is, it, is there a sign in the glass? Yeah. Yeah, it's listed online. Okay. It, it is a basement, like a, a crappy spot. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why it's right. cheaper. Well, full disclosure, I want to make sure that if we're trying to say, hey, right around the corner, on the, she knows what the area is good for. And she might say, well, goodness gracious, you're not going to find $10. Our only argument, and that is what negotiating is, it is what I am good at, it is why you hired me. Our only argument is the laundromat argument. We can always fall back on that. If she says the suite right next door is going for 14, I'll say, well, not a laundromat. What does that mean? What the hell does that have to do with anything? I'll happily explain to her, you, and anyone listening. I have to spend X amount per square foot, $100 plus on equipment. The store next door, maybe they're a good barbecue joint. What are they selling? They're selling the knowledge in the chef's head. Yeah, some meat comes in the front door, and if they do really well, they'll never run out of meat. What do I mean? They'll have the exact amount for every day. Shit, I don't want to be in the restaurant business. Too much meat, not enough meat. Put it in the freezer, but whatever. Don't know that business. Don't understand it, don't claim to. But that's a different business. They're selling food. Then across the way, same strip mall, there's a veterinarian. They're selling the knowledge in the doctor's head. Do we call them doctors? Hope there's no veterinarians listening. They, and Tyler, you can tell the folks here, our interactions and our telephone calls are no different than this when I'm on YouTube. I might be a, try to be a little dumber and say some more flowery things, but do you really see a difference? Not really, no. No. It's the same shit. I get on consultations with people whom I've never spoke to, and they get weird. And I'm like, what's, what's going on? And they're like, well, I don't really want to say that on YouTube. I'm like, bro, you're not that interesting. Tyler, you're <laughs> not that. In they think that everything I do is on YouTube. It's like 1% of what I do ends up on the YouTube machine. We happen to have a good appointment with the gal. She's on a three-hour drive from the hospital with her gram gram and... Here we are, because it's hard to schedule these things. Anyway, who gives a shit? No, no, no one thinks about it. I feel so bad for the producer who makes tens of millions of dollars with the films that he makes because he loses sleep. This is one of my horrible analogies, right? <laughs> Nobody thinks about that. They think about the yacht and the hot maid and the girlfriend and the this and the that. This is my road to hoe. All right. What do you think is most interested, intriguing about this store? It is uh, shut down. We know that. You could never get a hold of anybody. We couldn't get a hold of anybody. Now, is it a strip mall? Yes. Small strip mall. What's the makeup? What else is in this spot without using specifics? There, there was a uh, like a paycheck place, but that... That place is vacant now, and Ooh. then there's a there's a place you can rent things short term. Okay, <laughs> and then a deli, and then this is the other end. It's a vacant laundromat. Okay, these are our people. First of all, the deli's nice; everyone eats. The rent a spot, low income type folks. The check cashing joint being closed down that will probably be snapped up by a lesser, lesser check cashing joint. That's what ends up happening because there's a gap that needs to be filled there. The infrastructure is here. Now, how far, again, remind me, I won't ask for forgiveness, how far did we get on getting this drilled down to the proper price? Uh, we really haven't at all. She, when you called her, she was at the hospital with Graham Graham, and uh, there you go. She had to, she had to look up the price and t email us later. 
Okay, so we have not sent a letter of intent. We haven't drilled everything down. She's driving in her car right now, if she still is. I like this kind of gal. It's pretty casual. But what we are going to do... Now look, 12 bucks a square foot is where we want to be. And I'm not going to get too flowery on this because we're going to... What we are doing right now is academic. And I'm not a professor. I'm not here to talk to you or any about anybody about what we're about to do. Other than the strategy, right? Well, I don't need to bring you in on the strategy. You give me carte blanche. The rent for this spot with cams, and their cams are really high. Common area, maintenance fees, etc. We can pound on that, but we can't really change it. I have. I've changed it in the past. I've said I'm not going to pay that. And they make allowances for us because we are a laundry, etc. But it's rare. Very, very rare. Not even something you want to bring up because it's so hard to do. Normally, there's going to be a national chain, a Neiman Marcus next door. It doesn't happen. And they're, they'll tell you, well, they're so happy to pay the cams. We can decrease yours a little bit per square footage. You're looking at $3,385 a month. Well, I'm going for 10 bucks a square foot. We're going to explain why she should be good to go. Now, these conversations trip the next conversation. If she says, well, I don't know, but I'll find out. We're not going to talk about TI, tenant improvement money. A lot of folks on this call don't have any idea that you can get free rent. You know that. Many yeah. of them do. Many of them have scooped up abated rent. Yes, folks, it's there. Every landlord knows about it. If you come in and say, well, I want to start my Braille dartboard company, they're going to say, you're a schmuck. First and last month's rent, six months up front, good luck. But if you come in with a good plan, they'll give you a year of free motherfucking rent. Oh, your kids, sorry. Kids, you should and not be watching It's been this. closed. <laughs> It's been closed for two years, so there's really no argument on, on abatement. No argument. Rent abatement. But again, I'm telling you the strategery. I'm not going to, to call someone and say, well, she's, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm at the hospital. I can't really think. I got my grandma here. God bless her. Well, I need a year free, and I need $50,000 in TI. Just had an LOI come back with $78,000 in TI. We're not going to talk about all of that now. We have to get the most important thing, which is the rate of rent and the starting point, out of the way. If she says yes on this call because she knows who we are, she's crawled up our ass, she's got an email. So now they're geared up and ready to go. And I'm explaining why these tears, why we trip the next conversation. She says yes to 10 bucks, or she says no, which is rare. She's not the decision maker. Or she says, let me ask. Conversation's over. If she says, I think we can do that, excellent, let's talk about abatement and TI. I'm asking for 18 months. All right, let's call her up without further ado. Anything let's else you want to say before you, your blindfold and cigarette? What was that? Anything else you want to say? You're so nervous. Let's get it it's done. So actually <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> My God, it's I'm, I'm, I'm not Mr. Beast. Far from it. <laughs> Whoa, she's got her picture on her uh, contact. Have you seen that picture? I'll just give it a little blurry look there, but yeah. Sorry, my wife's also watching. Oh, this is fun. Subscribe. I only tell you to do that when it's ringing. Come on. Your call has been forwarded to an...
All right, we're going to call everybody back. Hi, everybody. Sorry about that. I press the mute button and everything goes kaflooey. Leave it to live television. A little dialing music, Paul. Unbelievable. And Tyler's kids are watching. I feel bad. Don't forget to jump into the comments. If you haven't subscribed, do that. Let's be friends. Yo. My apologies for missing your call. Uh, she's texting me. Hold on here. Three, two, one. Here we go. Testing, testing. <clears throat> All right. Everything's working again. Hallelujah. Uh, okay. I don't. Now Regina's dialing, so here we go. Stay where you're at. Hi, Danny. How are you? Never felt better, never had more. What the hell's going on over there? How's grandma? <laughs> I'm so, uh, it was a rough day. I shed a lot of tears today. I'm um, sorry. Yeah, it, it was, it's okay. It was a, just a very rough, rough day. Well, um, she should have stopped smoking a long time ago. Uh, yeah, and she didn't have that problem, so yeah, bless just her trying heart. to just trying to lighten I, the mood. Listen, thank uh, you. That's, are you are you good yeah, to sort of sure. suss out what we can get away with here? And you know, we want to send yeah, you a letter of intent, but we want to we want sure. to get get the big stuff out of the way. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Go ahead. First and foremost is the rate of rent. That's the important thing. You, I think we talked about we need a 15-year term. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, the laundromat business is just different. And I don't mean that Regina doesn't go into a laundromat every weekend. You likely don't. Middle-class people don't. It is different in that way. And that's why so many operators don't know what they're doing. They've never been in one. If they've been in one, it was 30 years ago when they were in college. And then they just think, oh, this is picking up money out of the streets. That's not what it is. So... My partner, sure. partner Tyler, and my experience is very different where we don't kid ourselves. We know what it takes to be successful because what you want are, are tenants that you don't have to worry about, meaning where's my check? What the hell is going on? Why are you not meeting our expectations? So we need to start at $10 a square foot. And part of that, to be honest, I should be asking for, for less your cams are high here. Why is it that your cams are so high? I I can't answer that. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, sometimes I know the landlord. Look, when the plaza's full, the landlord's kind of like, eh, all right, things are good. Make hay when the sun is shining. But you've lost some tenants. Lost and I would think he'd be out there trying to find cheaper snow removal, trying to figure out. Who can paint the building Agreed. for half the price? Agreed. Now, I do know that the previous tenants were there for many, many years. Right. And well, they just got out of the laundry business, actually. They were done. It was a it was a couple. Um, I knew them very well because I took my drive thinking there, like I had mentioned to you. So, right. yeah. Well, you know, I, I know that I, I think that a normal operator that's thinking about maybe perhaps getting into a business might want to know what happened to the previous tenant. I know what happened. They they took money from the business and they never put it back in. That's that's why laundromats fail. You have to come in every seven years and retool. That's also when our depreciation runs out on our taxes, so it makes it kind of nice. And that's why we need fifteen. It, 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 if we're still talking at ten bucks a square foot on a fifteen year lease, then I'll I'll touch touch the other points. Okay, um, go ahead. I'll have to take this back to them. Go ahead. Sure. Rent abatement on a 15 year term. We are normally asking for 18 months of abatement and we don't ask for that in order to get to six. Again, I can't get this store retooled tomorrow. I wish I could. If this was a dollar store, I don't know. I'd have the back doors flung open. I'd have all the shelves full in a day or a weekend and I'd be running. That time that we need is also not just to retool but also to bring the consumers back. Don't forget the folks that were using this laundromat, 
They haven't been storing their laundry in a closet waiting for this place to reopen. They've found another service center. They're going there. They're likely not thrilled, but happy. And we intend to drag them all back. So that abatement, I don't know. Normally I might hear from you. Well, the landlord normally offers XXX. What say you? Gotcha. And, and again, I'll have to go back and ask that. Okay. Uh, as far as TI money, does this landlord spend? Do they help us out? I don't know anything in regards to this. I was just showing you the property because I'm not the listing agent. So I'll have to get that information for you. Okay. But you, you have direct access. And my broker is the listing agent. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. That's what I thought. Uh, we were trying to reach someone for a few months with to no avail. Let's just put it that way. And so we switched gears, uh, decided that it seemed that Regina was the gal to talk to. And, and here we are. So, well, I so appreciate it. And I will <laughs> do my absolute best for you. <laughs> well, look, you know, I this isn't, do. this isn't a multi-million dollar listing. We all know it's a, it's a commercial right, real estate absolutely. deal. And what we all, we're all pointed in the same direction. We all want the same thing, believe it or not. I don't believe in win-wins, but the, the items that we ask for are what we need in order to be successful. So I always ask, do they have any money? And if the answer is no, no, we've never put money into tenant improvements. Okay, then we need to focus on something perhaps else that we might need. And I'm not looking to partner with anybody. It's a sound building. It looks like the roof is fairly new. You've got a national chain next door that's still there. Another one that left. So at the end of the day, uh, we're not, we're not, we're in the TI, we're going to ask you what we need. That's also going to elevate your building going to, they're not going to spend money on washers and dryers. I know that, but you need to have an ADA compliant restroom. You have to have good working air conditioning units, et cetera. So Correct. let's do this. Talk to them about 10 bucks a square foot. If that's a go, then we will send you a letter of intent with the other. And also, so there's three things. 10 bucks is a big deal with obvious es escalations, uh, abatement, and TI. Those are the only things I need to hear uh, back from you. Text me when you have time sure to talk, thing. and we'll get on a call. Okay, that sounds good. Perfect. Appreciate you. Okay. What's, 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 grandma's, you. what's grandma's first name so I can pray? Thank you so much. Her name is Bernadine, and she's very Christian. And good. That's all she does. And she just wants to live with me and my uncle's power of attorney. And he doesn't make it possible. So it's really right. it's I don't, heartbreaking. I don't want to hear anymore. Thank I don't you. want to start bawling no, about this. Absolutely. Bernadine, God bless Thank her. Thank you. Bernadine. All right, let me know, Thank Regina. You so very Drive much. safe, please. Absolutely. Thank okay. you. Have a great day. Right, I you appreciate too. you. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, the reason... We are not sending an LOI. Do you understand through my teaching? Yeah, we need to make sure they're going to be good with the 10 bucks before we go that far. If they have something to physically look at tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., this landlord, whatever entity that it is, who previously hired a schmuck that never answered his phone, who's now brought Regina in, who does a very good job, there's nothing in this for her. A couple bucks. Not a lot of money in commercial real estate deals like this, Okay. The best ones are the ones that own the property because they have a vested interest. They're looking at that three hundred grand in future rent. What was my point? Oh, if we if we gave them an LOI with everything we need, they can poo poo it and say, "Oh God, that's ridiculous. That's not going to happen." I get the impression that Regina and I and you are going to make a deal, but don't lose sleep over this. The deal isn't happening yet. We don't send an LOI until she comes back with us and says, yeah, they, if they say 11, and you understand this, a lot of people don't, we are aiming for a dollar a square foot, be it New York, LA, or anywhere else, and we still get it. And it's $12 a year, so that's 12 is one. We're asking for 80 cents a square, dude, at 10 bucks, okay? And truly, when I said, why are the triple nets, why are the cams so high? She might have said, oh, are they, right? I'm taking a risk. 
oh, are they? Or I didn't know. Or she might lie and say, I don't, and I don't think she's a liar. She might say, I don't think they're high or they're not high <laughs> for the area. Or we had an incredible snow. Common area maintenance or cam charges. Many of my buildings, I would go to the landlords and say, I'm not going to pay to trim these friggin' trees anymore. Cut them down. I'm out. I don't want to pay every year. And they're like, oh, we never thought about cutting down the palm trees. Well, what good are they doing anybody? <laughs> you see, I don't know what they're called. I'm not a phlebotomist. That's somebody who takes blood. But these tall ass trees, you get shade, what? At 1201, if you stand right under it. So sometimes I would have a, 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 an intelligent thinking person says, why are we doing it this way? Well, because we always have. Let's change it. And truly, their cams are high. High. All right, the only question for you, Tyler, do you want to stay on the YouTube because we're going to go back to the top chat and talk to the people? Sure. I'm going to make fun of you. All right, uh, we're, <laughs> we're back. Guys, feel free to jump in. Thank you, Tyler, for joining us. Uh, I'm Danny D'Angelo, the self-proclaimed king of laundry. Am I 53 now, born in 1971? I'm an old man. I'm a consultant. The flip side is, oh, this guy doesn't know shit about laundromats, doesn't have any anymore. I sold an empire of laundromats. And today, right now, this very minute, I have my finger in the pie of more laundromats than anyone on planet Earth because I'm fielding emails where folks like Tyler are doing the physical legwork and going out and scouting the laundromats snapping photographs surreptitiously, putting them into a document, and I'm looking at them. In Guam, Puerto Rico, New York, L.A., Ottumwa, Iowa, Ohio, Paris, a couple other countries. Uh, New Hampshire, is that a country, Tyler? Tyler, if you're going to be with me, man, you gotta, so. you got to be my foil. you got to bounce off me here. you got to interrupt. All right. <laughs> Wit says, hi, Danny, this is Wit. Uh, there's some guy building a laundromat from scratch, and he wants a monthly subscription payment method with unlimited washes instead of coin slash card. What do you think? What do I think about what, Wit? That doesn't make any sense. He's a guy that it sounds like is trying to reinvent the wheel. I wish him all the luck in the world. That's weird. I don't know. Is it on YouTube? Joe says, hello from Canada. Hi, Joe. Torek Myers, hey, Danny. Hello. Uh, Flamingo wash and fold. Well, that sounds very specific to somebody that probably has a thing. This is Candace. What responsibility does a landlord have to update gas, water, Electric in a laundromat that has not been updated or maintained well since it was built in 1960. Uh, Candace, not much to go on there. What responsibility does landlord have in a brand new lease? You would ask them for the TI. You would be very specific and you want everything to code. I don't know what you're asking me. Since your name is Flamingo Washenfold, I wonder if you, Candace, work in a laundromat or own a laundromat. I don't know. But I'll tell you this, if you are paying rent in a laundromat, there's no way that landlord's going to do shit for you until it's time to renew that lease. And at that point, you have some leverage, right? You can go march into his office, kick his door in, or have me call him, and you can say, Hey, we've had a good 10-year relationship. Look on paper. I've always paid on time. I'm willing to sign for another 10. However, you're going to have to fix this, this, then this, or at the very least, warranty it. Because I wonder, what's the problem? Plumbing from the 1960s is in many cases better than modern plumbing. Any plumbers on here? They know what I mean. I know what I'm talking about. Not because of my laundry experience. Because my dad was a contractor and a freelance pharmacist. So not enough to go by, really, Candace. Uh, but I, I'm trying to answer even in total. 
The electric probably does need to be upgraded. That happens. Now, the ball's on you because you're going to go in there and say, all I'm willing to do is re-sign a lease and I need to reset the lease. Candace, the most important thing to you is to reset that at a new lower price. Guys, when you rent an apartment, you decide day one, will they offer you a five-year lease on an apartment? Normally, no. Normally, no. Because rates are going to go up in five years and they want to be able to zap you for it. Really, never down, okay? Unless you live in Baltimore. But um boom. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. That apartment rent is going to go up, so you do a year lease, and the next year it goes up. And guys, we're used to that. What have you rented? An apartment, a car, a home, <coughs> a girlfriend? That rental rate goes up. In commercial space, the entire rate might go up year over year, but you and your business, you need to know how to negotiate a reset of that amount, period. People don't get that. The normal mindset is, well, that is what it is. That's what I'm going to pay. They're asking $14 a square foot. You heard me just ask for 10 and she said, I'll go back to them. Remember when I told you she has three choices? She can say yes, no, or I will ask. She could have also said, Tyler, oh, there's no way that's going to happen. Right. Torek is back and says, been a minute. Sure, okay. Uh, he just commented, the comment before. Sam says, I'm still watching the DVD all the way from Massachusetts. Uh, Sam, do you mean the actual old DVD or do you mean you're watching the streaming course? We'll still send you the DVD, but I don't know why you would want it. Silly. Have you ever even seen it, Tyler? Like physically seen it? The DVD now, but... no. I'll be a pain in your ass, and uh, I want one now. Well, fuck you. Tough. <laughs> the DVD. <laughs> it's a collector's item, man. I'll send you one, Tyler. You gotta text me your address. There it is. So, that's three hours on plastic, and now we have 101 plus hours streaming to your phone or your computer. Uh, all right, we got to burn through these now. Been a minute, yes, it has. Watching the DVD. I, in a lot of my old testimonials, there's endless people saying DVD, DVD, DVD. So even my wife and I still, when when we discuss the course, it's the DVD. <sighs> Prairie Sports Writers Association. Well, hello, good day. This meeting shall come to order. Uh, even when you're in a position to take over a laundromat for free, what's the top five showstoppers? That make you walk away. Uh, Prairie Sports Riders Association. You must be new because when you have a name like that, Dingle Fritz 39, I'd like to hear your name. So PSRA. I'm not going to do a top five list. I'll give you the number one. What is it, Tyler? What's the one thing that's going to make you say no? Laundromat killer down the road. What'd you say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. A laund laundromat killer yep. down the road. That's not even number one. Number one is size because he's asking about a specific store. You're correct. Yes. Good point. But if the store is too small to profit, we're not going to do it. You can't build a McDonald's in a walk-in closet. It will not work. McDonald's knows that. And you can't build a laundromat less than 1,500 square feet. 1,500 is the profitable marker. 25 washers is what you're looking for if you're not a contractor. And Tyler brings up a good point. There's a ton of factors all in the course. One of those is you find the perfect ideal takeover. Everything is great. Perfect. You better drive the area in concentric circles. Do an FBI grid pattern search. Find out if there's a big Beautiful laundry. Now, if some idiot just built it from scratch and they owe a million dollars to the bank, doesn't really matter much to you because that place may not make that operator money, but it's going to suck the consumers. Lumberjack Landlord, love this guy. If you can't tell Danny is the real deal by watching him interact with the landlords, you have no idea what you are looking for. Hallelujah, brother. 
appreciate that. Wade says, I can attest to Danny's system and uh, the man himself. Look at you guys. Uh, both his system, I hate that word, but it's okay. I'll allow it. His system and Danny are solid. He will not allow you to start behind the eight ball. Thanks, Wade. Uh, Wade has his free laundry up in Canada. Juan says, what do I do if I've watched one of your videos is scouting same area, South Florida, Federal Highway. Just keep scouting, correct? <gasps> no, Juan! <laughs> it's fun to have you on here laughing. <laughs> Tyler. What type of poison should Juan immediately take? Juan, dude, and, th- and I want to talk to all of you on here. If you think, wow, I just heard Danny make a phone call in Ohio, so I'm not going to bother to try to get myself a free laundries. Get off your hump, get on your scooter, and go look at every laundromat in your county, city, state. Same with you, Juan. There are shit-ass laundries everywhere, and there is enough of Danny to go around. If my channel somehow hits and ends up in the tens of millions of views a day, which ain't going to happen because I curse too much, if that happens and everyone changes the way they do things, maybe someday, decades from now, that'll be an issue. But right now, bro, here's another thing. Hey, Danny, I saw your course and you talk about a payphone being in the laundry as an indication of failure. That's got to be some old information. Tyler, when's the last time you saw a payphone in the laundromat? Last week. <laughs> Still I even there. seen a, a pay TV. <laughs> a magic fingers bed in a laundromat. <laughs> oh my God. See, because these people are watching the course from their ivory tower and they're saying, oh, this has got to be old information. Well, I built the course and DVD 20 years ago. That's how long I've been doing this. But I, ha- I have changed and added information. You'll never see the stuff I removed, but what you will see is the stuff that you believe. I'm a little younger. I'm fully shaved in the thing. I could go reshoot it tomorrow. Why would I? Information still stands. And the rest of the universe that's building courses and talking about laundromats are talking about how you should responsibly buy them. Fundamentally. Tyler, I love you, but if you never end up with a laundromat, are you better for having met me? Absolutely. Even the monies that you paid me, if that all goes away and you decide to do something else, don't answer that. Because yes, yes, I consult with not only people that know nothing about laundries, but folks that already own them. And it's always this lengthy diatribe about how they're losing their ass. And the ones that think they're earning, they'll say, well, we're doing... $11,000 $11,000 a month with these three stores, net, but it's not enough. Can you help us make more? Then I dive into what they're doing. Okay, what's your payroll? That's the first thing I'll ask. Uh, $20,000. Oh, with all three stores? More like $30,000 a month. What are you doing? What the? F- well, we're in California, so we have to pay them 18 18- Contract attendance. Dude, I literally fixed this stuff. I don't need a chalkboard to understand that cyanide is poison. That analogy makes no fucking sense. All right. Juan, I hope I answered your question. Well, going back to that, I I texted you right after I hired you that I seen the line of I was looking at on YouTube. And I thought for sure, like, it it wasn't going to be enough to go around because I'm not in a very densely populated area. Yeah. But I have not run into any shortage of laundromats around here. Right. Thank you, Tyler. Checks in the mail, buddy. Now I'm going to send you a DVD. Silly. I'll even sign it. (laughs) And and, And frankly, I don't remember that. If I were a politician, number one, right out of screenshot, right about here, and here, there'd be five people telling me what to say and how to say it. I'd have an earpiece in that does no more than tell me what to say to the next person and the next. And, oh, bring up the woman in Iowa. Bring up Tyler in Ohio that spoke to you and told you this and this. I just don't remember. 
And that's why I tell people, see for the self. Go out and scout laundries. Juan, when you see 35 shit-ass laundromats, I've even heard people, I think every store in my area is brand new and they got the Danny D'Angelo coursing through their veins because they're all white in color. I thought years ago about making a little sticker, maybe two and a half by three inches. FLM, right? Like an inside joke with my signature or some dumb shit or my face with a hat on. Stick it in the glass when you have your free laundromat. It's telling everybody, go away. But the truth is, if they don't keep up with the store, retool it and operate it properly, that store could fall. The free laundromats have fallen. It's happened. Sam says, I didn't finish watching all of the streaming yet, but I've already seen a laundromat closed in my town has brown paper tape on the windows. Sam, you better get in touch with me. And by the way, the bulk of the course is three, three and a half hours. Finish that and let's get on a call. Email me. Anybody here can email me. Danny at freelaundromat.com. You have questions. You want to ask something silly. Go right ahead. Anyone on here can grab the course. I'm not here to sell you shit. I'm here to tell you, please, for the love of God, get it or do something else. It's a couple bucks. And it's not all salesy. Tyler can tell you. It's not every other video. Hire me, do this. Let me leave this dangling participle and questions for you to have. Not my style. Because I'm the guy that says, that go ahead. There's not even a limit on how many times you can watch a shower scene. <laughs> Your wife is paying attention. You can, uh, it goes back to Tyler. It goes back to the guy that I am. I was watching those late night infomercials back before the credit industry turned to shit three times. I was watching people talk about one tiny newspaper ad and you see right through it. I love infomercials. Don't get me wrong. I only have Sharknados in my house. Greg, buy the course. Thank you, Alec. Uh, Greg says, LOL, I think the phone did suggest the correct spelling, and I tapped on it. Knit, shamed, and admitting it. I don't remember what that was about. Uh, Torque says, buy the course. I have mine. Good for you. Thank you, buddy. Preaching to the choir. Uh, Greg, roger that regarding buying the course. Thank you all. Yeah, Greg, come on, dude. I'm in Ohio, too. Oh, shit. Tyler. Greg's in Ohio. Damn it. All right, I'll quit. There's also another guy in Ohio <laughs> who collects coins in laundromats. That's funny. Alec, uh, where? Let's start talking amongst yourselves about where you live. No one cares. Cincinnati, he says. Good for you. There's also another guy in Cincinnati who has a course. $5,000! It's his course. It's five grand. Uh, Sam says, what are the expenses to pay after getting the laundromat? Like taxes? Yes. Cleaning parking lot? No. It snows where I live? No. Sam, I'd be a real dick if I said, get the course, it's all in there. But I will say this to everybody on here. If you ask me a question that's laundromat specific and it is not answered in the course, I'll click a thing and give it to you for free. Sam, that's all answered. What are the expenses to pay after getting a laundromat? Dude, that's a very, very fearful question first. You are scared shitless about what it's going to cost you to own the laundromat. Go to college for 10 years, become a dentist or a doctor, set up a shingle, have your own practice, and then toil for the next eight, nine years in order to break even, pay off your college debt, pay for that spit sink if you're a dentist, or those stirrups if you're a doctor. You know what I'm talking about, Tyler. This business, bro, you're earning day three. Your question is fearful because you're worried about bills. Sam, you can answer in the comments. I'll get back to you in a minute. Does a $6,000 a month gas bill scare you? Answer truthfully. Sam says, oh, here we go. Do I need to get an LLC for a laundromat to protect myself from accidents in the laundromats? Dude, 
you need an LLC for what you fucking have right now. Do you own a car? Do you own a house? Meaning, do you have a mortgage? I'm sitting in a home that I own. When I get a letter from the association, it doesn't come to Danny D. It comes to the Danny D'Angelo Trust LLC. Every billionaire that I know personally has a Christmas tree of LLCs. Learn about LLCs. Don't ask the generic fearful question, do I need one to protect myself? It's not going to really truly protect you. Nothing can. I can sue you, Sam, right now for that comment you made. Should I, Tyler? Let me get my lawyer on the phone. Anyone can sue you or anybody for anything, bro. Get over it. A limited liability company doesn't limit your liability in much of anything. But it is, yes, a necessary entity so that your taxes will be done right. I, the question, do I need an LLC, just kind of irks me because it is covered in the course. Even where to get it, how to get it cheaply. I pay $20 each for LLCs because my accountant does them for me. Send them in the name, get the thing. Alex says, yes. I love it when you guys answer people's questions. Good morning, Danny and Wade. Uh, Andrew's saying good morning, even though it's likely afternoon unless he's somewhere in the British Isles because I say that all day. I don't want to know what time it is. Jose says, I've been, mm -mm, I've been watching your videos and I'm buying your course this week. Thank you for making all these videos. I've learned so much from you. Jose, that means a lot. Gracias. And Jose, I want to say what I hear in your statement is that you have to wait for a paycheck in order to get my silly course. So it means even more to me. Okay? It is good to be in a position where money is truly not an object. I hear me saying that to certain people, not throughout my day, not in line at the bank. She already knows that. But when it isn't an object, when my wife or I are, and I are out eating and they'll say, here's the price of the bottle of wine, I'm not going to be a dick. I'm going to say, that's not an object. So then they know for future reference, they don't have to tell me how much the main lobster is. And let me tell you, Jose, this laundromat thing can do that for you. Just do it right. It means the world to me. Uh, Noah says, $10 a square foot, 18 months abatement in today's market. That's why Danny's the goat. <laughs> Thank you, Noah. A horticulturist, the guy says, yeah, I know what it is. What's an ichthyologist without looking it up? I am truly an ichthyologist. Uh, LOI, says Pablo. Arborist. Now they're fighting over what you call a tree hugger. Alec, you're right. It is also an arborist, perhaps. I think a horticulturist, an arborist. Uh, Pablo says, even better. I've lost track of what we're talking about. I'm waiting for Tyler to say who's on first. Abraham says, car wash and laundromat for sale around me, but my mind gets the best of me. I suffer from pussy syndrome, he says. <laughs> Abram, I applaud you for being real with us and more importantly yourself. I applaud you for saying you suffer from that. So here, in your mind and anybody else that's listening that feels this way, I am the type of person that says, I'm going to do this. I'm going to jump. I'm going to spend this much on gold, silver, uh, stock, giving it a shot for the most beautiful woman in the world and marrying her and having three kids with her, those things. And if I didn't do it, where would I be now? So where will you be in a decade? Where will your family be? In future generations, if you don't start, if you don't break the chains, if you don't change that J-O-B. Job, what's it stand for, Tyler? Just over broke. Just over broke. That's where you will be. Whatever you do for a living, and if it is a job, your boss loves you. Because he's sitting in the ivory tower while you are pulling the cart. D says, we should aim to get a gross rental rate equal or below $1 per square foot 
G, do you ever negotiate a triple net lease rate? No. I don't negotiate triple nets. That is something that is standard. If you're asking if I... <laughs> triple nets are just there, bro. They're a constant. You're going to get a bill at the end of the year that is split up. If it's a 4,000 square foot laundry on a free standalone building, triple nets are yours. If there's a 10,000 square foot dollar store and a 50,000 square foot Walmart and your 4,000 square foot laundromat, Tyler, how much does that equal altogether? Who knows? X. You're going to get your percentage of X in the triple nets. Do I negotiate triple net leases? All the time, every day. Absolutely. Yes. But there's no negotiating anything but the rate. I hope that helps. Sam says, Danny, you have a lot of knowledge and skills. How to deal with landlords? Question mark. Okay, that sounds more like a statement. I admire how you approach with stealth and language. You have perfect really well. I think he means perfected. Then he does a semicolon. Not sure why. I can't hardly wait to do it. My first call. Well, Sam, uh, I assume English is your second language. I'm just fucking with you. But I assume you mean that I will be making that first call. And kids, folks at home, ladies and gentlemen, all you louts, I can. This isn't the sales portion of this because I'm not going to sell you anything. Freelaundromat.com doesn't have a clicky button where you can hire me. It doesn't. It never will. Because the first thing you need to know is figure out if this is right for you. Get the silly course. Then we'll know if it is right for you. Uh, Sam says, I bought the combo deal DVD streaming too. Thank you. That's great. It's, it's included really, but he's talking about the monthly ongoing thing, which is nothing. Sam, send me an email. I'm going to, I'm going to take you off of the monthly stream because I, I don't want you to pay for it because you're on here. That's I, now everybody else is going to freak out. If you're on this live, I'll do it for you too. Uh, thank you, Danny. My poison is tequila. You and Shelly are going to get along great. She drinks that shit like it's gasoline. Mm. She drinks it like it's water, but it smells like gas to me. Thanks, Tyler. For You, you don't need to stifle the laughs, man. It helps me out. Uh, Google search only goes so far. Part of the fun is scouting. Majority of the time, uh, the zombie mats are the ones that are not on Google. Correct. Willie is correct. You can't use the Google Nader to find the really good stores, meaning the really bad ones. Uh, Eddie says, I'm going scouting again Sunday. Very good. Mr. Manpow, it's tough finding one in the Minneapolis area. If there is one for sale, a broker is attached to it. Dude, it doesn't have to be for sale. The preponderance of the stores we take over. Here's a guy that still doesn't get it. The store doesn't have to be closed. It just has to be a shitty laundromat. It doesn't have to be for sale. It just has to be a shitty laundromat. Does it have to be anything else, Tyler? Just got to be shitty. Just got to be a shitty laundromat. If there is a shitty laundromat that is no longer servicing the community, it has 10% out of order equipment. 20% out of order, 60% out of order equipment. You're not taking that old operator who's barely making ends meet and throwing him out the plate glass window. You're doing him a favor because he's already given up. That's what, the preponderance of the stores that we take over are operating. So Mr. Manow, you're doing it wrong. You're sitting at home looking for laundromats for sale. That goes to all the other schmucks that are saying, let me teach you how to properly buy a laundromat. Don't buy one. And yes, the broker's attached. Okay, Mr. Manow, it's tough finding one in Minneapolis because there's one for sale and broker's attached to it. If he's talking about getting it for free, Tyler, what's he doing? He's looking online, finding a store that looks ideal because it's a piece of shit. Then he's wondering where it is. You're doing it wrong because you never should have looked for it online to begin with. You should have walked into it. If you call that broker, and I have videos on my channel doing this, mental masturbation technique, call the broker, sorry kids, call the broker 
<clears throat> he wants you to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Tyler, when you sign the NDA, what does that broker give you? Only one thing. What is it? The address. The address. He'll pump you full of BS and tell you how much money it made in the heyday. How many customers come in? How many cars drive by every day? How much the gas bill is? The electric bill. The gas bill is nothing. The place is a shithole. All this negative discussion that we are having. Uh, that was a text from Regina. I don't know if she's still driving. Triple net charges are $2.50. That's the wrong way. <laughs> well, triple nets, there's nothing we can do about it. Remind me what my point was just making because I'll forget. Uh, <clears throat> trying to see if she's saying anything that's important here. You broke up there. What was that? Was the ten dollars a square foot plus triple net charges? Uh, I'm writing her back. I, you know, I don't text negotiate. Okay, I don't do it. But in this case, I want to give her an answer so she goes back to the landlord with the proper ammunition for you. Okay. Hi, Danny. Was the 10 bucks a square foot triple net, including triple net charges? Triple nets are 250. Should I write absolutely not, dummy? No. <laughs> it's pretty obvious yep. it's not because it's, it's, it's almost thrice what the rent is going to be for the triple net charges. <clears throat> not including the capital N N N period. I wish we could expect that. Okay. So you see how a well thought out text is going to make her go, Oh, shh. okay. Go back to the landlord with the proper information. Was the $10 triple net plus triple net charges, not including the triple net. I wish we could expect that you get it. Okay. So, Placated, done. Perfect. <sighs> okay. I got shit to do. I'm having a lot of fun with you guys. It's funny when I say something like that, we go inst almost instantly from 62 uh, con concurrent viewers to 48. Like that. Because I'll say like, oh, I got to go. And they're like, Rah! I'm not going anywhere. Ask a question. There's 48 people on here. Right now, don't you have 48 questions? All 48 of you, go into the top chat and give me your first name. It's all I want. I'm going to say it at the end. You're going to get a shout out. Uh, $6,000 gas bill means money. Thank you, sir. Drinking water from a fire hose. I'll be taking, talking with you soon, Danny. I love that expression. I know you didn't make it up, Nathan, but I love that expression. You know how you remember the first time you heard a thing? My friend John Brooks, Marine Scout sniper, the first time I ever heard the word turd cutter, it was from him. My wife has a nice ass. First time I ever heard the term, like drinking from a fire hose, was someone reference, referencing my DVD probably in 2014, and it meant the world to me. I looked it up, and I was like, oh, he didn't make it up. And he told me, because I was interested through an email, I'm like, I love that phrase, where'd you hear it? He told me that he first heard it from a college professor. Hey, Danny, it's Alex. Uh, what's the biggest challenge you had to face when you got your free laundromat? Well, that should be many, many plural there, buddy, a lot. Not the mistake of buying a laundromat. Uh, what's the biggest challenge? Uh, Alex, I hear you asking a question, and it's very, very, very general. The biggest challenge was never my challenge. The biggest challenge for anyone is deciding I'm not going to do the regular thing, right? Right. Generally speaking, Tyler, what do you do for money? I'm a lineman. Good money. Good job, right? That's a good job. Now you're not answering because like, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> versus breaking your back versus getting killed, God forbid, and leaving your family in the Lord. It's a dangerous job, right? 
Yep. But that's a good job. Now, you didn't snap off. Yeah, sure. Remember when you went for that job, how excited you were? Yeah, I thought I was going to be rich. <laughs> well, dude, three kids. College. If you're dumb enough to buy him a college. I applaud you for doing this because this, owning the business, whatever the business is, whatever you do, one of them, I had a lot of jobs. One of them is a bartender. So I'm like, did I sit there and go, I'm going to own this bar or I'm going to own a, but no, I work for Marriott. I can't own Marriott. I could marry a Marriott maybe, but I never thought I want to own a bar. But just about every job that I had, I picked up a skill set. And I said to myself, I don't want to be my boss who's 50, 60, 70 doing this thing. And for me, this is a part-time gig. Can't wait to get out. RJ says, uh, you don't need an LLC. You need a trust or an organiz- slash organization. Not true. He does need an LLC. And so do you. Everybody on here does. You have an l- asset or a liability, throw it into an LLC going to save you in the long run also for your taxes if you make a shit ton of money and then you have this hobby where you golf and your wife says to you golfing costs us eighty thousand dollars last year little man start a golf training company never intend to ever make any money with it now your cigars are a write-off your next golf cart is a write-off help me out tyler all the shizzy That's the way taxes work. That's how the rich stay rich and get richer. Luis said, made it to the live. Yay, Luis. Let's hear it for Luis. (laughs) That's the only button that I know what it does. So, sorry, not sorry. Noah says, we called a laundromat yesterday, 10,000 square feet, which is small, but but works in Canada, as you put it. Since all of our laundromats are very small, uh... Is there any size amount of washers to? Yes, yes. And Noah, you have my in, my info. We can talk about this at the site. I, I don't mind you bringing it up, but yeah, you want it to be as big as it can be. And the only time a laundromat is still going to exist, it's that small. It's because the landlord is using it for the cash. In other words, he's not doing the one thing that you must do: pay the rent. You see a lot of these stores on the East Coast in New York City, 900 square foot. The landlord is like, what the fuck am I going to do with this spot? So they have this itch they want to scratch. They build a laundromat and it's hooker and blow money. They collect the money. See, that's why I'll never get clicks. Annabelle says, do you have the course in Spanish? Yes. I will read the whole thing to you in Espanol. Hola, Annabelle. Que pasa? Tu madre es dos grandes labios. Uh, Mike says, fucking Mike. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Eddie's, oh, everybody's telling us their names. Okay, thanks. I know I'm getting to the end here. Uh, Matt and Matt and an ichthyologist studies fishies, I believe. Well, fish lover, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I love tropical fish. Eddie says Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Ron says Ron. Radar, Otomo, Iowa. Love it. Yes, I love my radar references. Uh, The one gamer says, hey, Danny, Isaiah, I'm scouting. Currently, I'm only seeing one that's already closed down and boarded up. It doesn't need to be closed down, Isaiah. Everybody, for the cheap seats. It doesn't need to be anything but a shitty laundromat. Anything but a shitty laundromat. It doesn't have to be closed for sale. Facing the sun. Okay? Holly says, Holly, hello. Hello. This is cute because you're kind of, a lot of you guys actually use your real name in your YouTube name. So I'm like, why are they saying Luke, Luke? Luke says Luke. Hi, Glenn, Luis, <clears throat> Hannibal. Very cool. Rick from New York City, New Jersey. Make up your mind, Rick. You can only be from one place. Tyler, you're letting Danny, me Danny, I got a non-laundromat uh, question Shoot, for you. Go. What's your price target for gold and silver? I don't have a target. Personally, uh, I buy, I occasionally sell, and the only reason that I would sell metals is because the person 
that I'm buying something from wants the metal. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when I buy a 50 caliber machine gun, the venerable Ma Deuce, when it comes down to the moment when I'm negotiating, I can say to this person, because the kind of people that own these types of things, right? I can say, I want to give you X. And they'll say, no, it's got to be Y. And I'll say, well, let's do X. They say, no, it's got to be Y. I say, well, meet in the middle. What if, what if I do it in gold? Oh, but I'm going to actually recoup. It's not what I paid for it. I'm going to give it to him for less than spot. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because the people that collect things like that, they're worried about the money. They'll say, well, I want it in cash. I'm like, no, I can write it off. This is a very, very large expense for a toy, by the way, that is also an investment. Yes, you can own machine guns in the United States. You can own tanks and flamethrowers. Don't get me started. But my price, and even for you and anybody listening, Tyler, you shouldn't have a pr- You shouldn't be saying, well, when it hits this, I'm going to do Y. When it triggers this, I'm going to do X. It doesn't make sense. The only thing you should concern yourself is how many pounds of silver you are going to sell to put into gold or vice versa. And that tipping point, there's a mathematical equation for. But you're asking me a personal question. I, I stack. I just, I buy the stuff. I don't get rid of it. And it's nice. I mean, it's, I haven't even looked at it today. But I, I say this, check your calendars, kids. I say it's going to 3K gold per ounce. before yeah, easy. Yeah, before we see. It's been stagnant for so very, very long. And I, I said, you can ask Shelly, if it goes to 2100, it's not going to stop till three. And then at three, there's going to be a big sell off. Uh, I know it's all longer. And, and look, I'm a versatile guy. I have opinions on stuff. And if you wind me up and let me go like Tyler's doing, I'm going to give you, give you the, give you both guns. Uh, hell, I wish all the ones I was scouting were closed down and boarded up. The ones are ripe for the picking wrong. You're wrong. A closed store is no different, better than one that's operating. In fact, why? Why is that store shut down? The video preceding this live was a video with a landlady that told us the ownership doesn't want a laundromat. They don't want anything in here. They're just sitting on it. So if you drove by that, you'd screech from 80 to zero and make a hard left turn and smash through the small children selling lemonade and say, oh my God, this is the greatest. No, dude. Don't fall in love with any one store. It's in the course. Wade from the hammer. I don't know what that means. Danny D, I can help with the Spanish. Hender! All right, Hender. Hender, are we going to talk on YouTube? Uh, I just need the infrastructure. LOL, I work in New York City. I live in New Jersey. I Don't... Uh, if you're an adult, don't ever LOL again. Everybody on here, please stop LOLing. Don't write it. You can laugh out loud, but just don't write it. Does the course cover collecting the money? Oh, God. Oh. Tyler, don't you wish I would have covered that? Yeah, you should have. No. We have to have to go over the investment joy to see that. <laughs> The course covers everything about every aspect of collecting. The best way to count, best way to collect, all that. Then he, she, they, it. I'm not sure who this is because their name is Blue Kate. Blue Crate One. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Up here. Rick. Sorry, Rick. My fault. He did give us his name earlier. Uh, Rick, the course does cover S- every aspect of it. And then you say, always think about the idiots checking me out to do their weekly arm robbery. It's not going to happen, bro. I'm ranked 32nd in pistol on the planet Earth. I'm a competition shooter. Never carried. Never concerned. Totally constitutional carry in Arizona, New Mexico, California. Never carried. Never concerned myself with it. You're not at the store at 3 a.m., Rick. Lawrence says, Lawrence. Hi, Lawrence. Greg says, I'm a stacker too. I can relate. Yeah, who cares? You know, buy. People aren't, if you're not buying right now because the price is up, you're a schmuck because the price is going up. 
Dollar cost averaging. Never have a routine to collect money different times, different days. There we go, Noah. Noah, don't give away my shit. This is all supposed to be a secret. Thanks, Danny, for the clarification. If I understand, we are focused on the lease rate. The triple net portion is part of standard yearly fees. 100% correct. Yes. Triple net cams, insurance, nothing we can do. Tyler, I'm done with you. Uh, she gets back to me. I'll get back to you right away, dude. Thanks for the time. Sounds. Yep. Love you, bye. Hi, kid. Love you, too. Bye, kids. Did he say I love you? I think he did. Oh, my God. Regina's on here. Just to be certain, $10 plus $250, $1250 total. Regina. 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 Do we all know and love Hender? I know I do. I got to get out of this computer seat. I got to go do some things. Dunny D. Subscribe. Dunny D. <laughs> now, is this conversation you've been clamoring to have, is this something that is YouTube friendly? Well, the beginning part of it, not. But the rest of it, it is. So. Oh, intriguing. First of all, you went on some other YouTube channel and he said free laundromat and you made a face. That hurt me. That hurt me. It really did. I, you're like, yeah, free. I, I know. I, I went back and I put him down. You put him down? Oh, for his yeah, editing? I, I, I put the message and that, no, I put the message and everything. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. See. Now, what do you, what do you mean by that? I don't, I don't know what you mean by that. I assume that you mean that that was clever editing on his part. Well, I'm not sure if he removed the thing or not, but I, I told him, I said, how can you be so sure of, of saying that, he's, that there's no such a thing as, um, as, uh, uh, as free down, what is it, free down payment that you get the machine, uh, not free, but a, um, without down payment from the distributor when I got it. Not only I got it, but I got also six months to a um, to, to to make my first payment. I think we're talking about something different. I'm talking about Waleed who came to your store. Right. That's all I'm talking. I'm 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 mostly playing with you, but he said like, "Oh, we'll get into the free laundromat thing," and it just see it almost seemed like we were at odds, you and I, or that nothing's free. I mean, you and I both know you're not going to pay for the business rights for the laundromat. Period. I call it free laundromat. I've always called it free laundromat. Anyone that wants to complain or balk or say that nothing's free, they're just being silly. They're just being stupid, to be frank. They're saying, oh, but I mean, does anyone really believe that you're going to go have a bright, shiny, beautiful laundromat with air conditioning and customers lining up for free? No, including me, no but you're not going to give someone hundreds of thousands of dollars so they'll walk away from their already failed business. That doesn't fit on a business card, so it's free. I'm just messing with you. I'm just referring to that one moment. And I know that his videos are very, very, very heavily edited. And for those that don't know, don't go looking. I, I don't even, why does he do YouTube? Do you know? Well, you know, it goes back to the, remember the analogies, and, and you're very good at that one, but the analogy of if somebody give you a free car, let's say a free Ferrari, and then, and Needs then maintenance. once you have it, and then what do you do with that? Oh, uh, well, yeah, you have to insure, and it costs you this much money, and then you have to, you know, put new tires because it's the summer or the winter, and oh, it wasn't free. Well, I don't know. I don't understand. You know, look, yeah. the, the car was free, but. Anyway, so that's it's, smart. It's, it's similar, but I'm going to steal that. All right. Well, what, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll call you the second we end the live. But what's what else is what else is going on? Well, I'm I'm uh, excited with uh, with uh, the new way uh, with my laundromat, and um, it's going well. It's growing every day, every week. In the beginning, I was nervous just because you know not not no people knew about it, but yeah, just every. They just keep coming. I didn't know you were open. No, I've been meaning to come for the past three weeks, and and uh, you know, I'm glad you opened. And now I'm gonna keep coming here. So it's um, it's exciting. I was nervous in the beginning, Danny, but uh, 
it's just it's, it's so nice how in a short period of time, you know, in a couple of months, it's just it's just been growing now. So I'm I'm awesome. excited about that. Awesome. Thank you. Congrat congrats. Take the don't forget, always take those opportunities to steal their soul and grab a picture. You know, whether it's an old guy, a young guy, a young woman, an old lady with a cane, say, Thank you so much. Let me pay for your wash. Do that first and then say, Can I can I get a quote from you on what you just said? It means so much to the community. You know, whether she said, I'm so happy, you're open, whatever. And then just phone comes out and you snap a picture of them. And then there's your social media. Got to do it. Bro, your dad. Yep. What else before I call you off the live? Um, that must well, be very excited to start. Very excited to start paying the rent after one year. <laughs> you have to pay rent now. <laughs> oh, I love you, man. You know what? <laughs> yeah, Shelly, you can't get a year free rent in in the, in New York. Oh, you're funny. All right. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna call you here as soon as I hang up, and and Shelly and I are gonna come to New York, and we're gonna do the thing. Just remember that I'm standing on one foot, brother. It's been a long time. All right, let me All say right, goodbye to these by, people. I'll call you right back. Gracias. Ciao. Adios, amigo. It's been a lot. It's been an hour and a half. Never know how long these are going to be. Do me a favor. Do yourself a personal favor. If you just joined us, or if you joined us at 10 minutes or 20 minutes in, go back and watch this. A lot of people that watch YouTube, what do we call ourselves? Viewers? I don't know. I include myself in that group. We skip. We hunt. We peck. All you're going to see is me. Ah, me, goo. All you're going to see is me doing a lot of this. I got up once. A lot of folks that I deal with, they're truck drivers, they're OTR. They're at work with an earpiece in and they're not filling out their TPS reports. So do yourself that favor. Go back and listen to this and a lot of my lives. Because there's not much structure to these when it comes to what you're going to learn. And the drinking from a fire hose means a lot to me. 57 folks are on here. Now let's have some fun. This is the fun inside joke. When someone new goes to this YouTube video and sees it, what do you do? Same thing. They're going to go to the comments and start reading them. Start hunting, pecking for a good comment. So all of you that are on here, as soon as I end this, go not in the top chat, but in the real comment section on the YouTube video. Do me the favor. Take the minute to go over there and click on the thing. Now, what are we going to talk about? I want you to do a complete sentence. That's all I want you to do. It could be wacky, off the wall, have to do with what you learned on this call. No, I have a better idea. Bernadine. Let's say a thing for Regina's grandma, Bernadine. Let's do that in the comments. Don't forget to have your pet spayed or neutered. I appreciate each and every one of you. Bernadine, God bless you. I hope you are better, more better. Cheers, everybody. Ciao.